Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 25th, 2018. And first up, this was sent to me by my friend Brian D. Thank you for sending this in. From space.com, water ice confirmed on the surface of the moon for the first time. Now this is not saying that they didn't suspect water ice was on the moon. They had very, uh, they had a lot of indirect uh, knowledge that there was water ice on the moon, especially in the dark areas underneath the craters. Well now, they've confirmed some data from two other probes that have been circling the moon for quite a while. And looking through that data, they've uh, said that within 20 degrees of the North and the South Pole, with the South Pole being much richer in water, but both of them having uh, substantial amounts of water, that uh, there's enough water in the moon to possibly be useful if we do decide to set up a lunar base before we do go all the way back to Mars. And as far as I know, that's still the basic plan with NASA, of going back to the moon first and then going on to Mars. But um, according to the, uh, I guess they, the Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft from India, the one that I talked about in a previous TDD report that circled the moon from uh, November 2008 to August 2009. And with the data collected, they were able to analyze that and uh, come up with the fact that, yes, it was direct evidence that there is actually water. Um, it says here, surface on uh, ice on the moon is patchier and less abundant than that found on other rocky airless bodies such as Mercury in the dwarf planet Ceres. Uh, I don't know if people uh, read about that on space.com, but they talked about surprisingly Mercury being so close to the sun still has a lot of water on it, especially because the backside not facing the sun uh, is very cold. The researcher said, indeed, only about 3.5% of lunar cold traps appear to boast surface water ice, according to the new study, and that's the main thing is surface water ice. There may be ice in a lot of other places, but if you can't get to it easily, like a few inches down, it might as well be, you know, on the other side of the universe for uh, astronauts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there's a good chance that if we do set up a moon base, we don't have to. That's one of the things you don't really want to haul a heck of a lot. I mean, you do have to haul some water aboard spacecraft to reach the moon and then to go to Mars, but you don't want to really haul a lot of it if you can get someone you're there, and especially a uh, uh, water and rocket fuel, if you can produce rocket fuel, which they may be doing when they get to Mars. And speaking of Mars, this one comes from Tom H. from CBS News, NASA. Still hopeful Mars rover will phone home. Now this report came out on the 21st, and this is the 25th, but they said they're still weeks away from possibly hearing from the Mars Opportunity rover. Now realize the Mars Opportunity rover was only meant to operate for several months, and it's on its uh, five-year mission, five years of its mission right now. So even if we do lose it after this with this dust storm, and for some reason it doesn't wake up and continue its journey, we have more than gotten our money, money's worth out of it. So um, yeah, the, the skies are starting to clear now, and the opacity is going away, plus the fact that Mars is, if you've been outside, I don't know if you've been outside and seen, but the last few nights I noticed just to the bottom and to the left of the moon uh, during the early part of the evening, you can see a bright red spot. So Mars is at its closest to us right now for a period of time, so now would be a good time if you want to go outside in the night sky and see. It's it's an unmistakable little red dot. Whether the moon's out or not, I think you should be able to see it because of the brightness and the redness of it. But yeah, Mars is closest to the sun now, so provided the panels on the Opportunity rover are not covered in dust really bad, and it's been able to preserve its power. Now, it has some things wrong with it because it's, you know, been operating for five years, uh, you know, way longer than the design. It has a heater that's stuck on that uses up about 200 watts of power, but what they've been doing is cycling it into deep sleep. Um, it's still even in deep sleep has to use about 40 watts of power, though. It's just like your uh, modern TV sets, too, uh, unless you totally unplug them, and you would want to do that to the rover because then it's pretty much going to be dead from the cold. It has to, it has to have a, at least a small amount of, of power uh, operating at all times, and 40 watts is about the best to do it, but um, yeah, if they do it in normal mode and don't put it in deep sleep mode, this heater is stuck open. So, like they said, it's like uh, flipping a, uh, a light switch in your house for your uh, uh, bedroom, and it's stuck on. So you have to go back to the breaker and turn it all the way off. That's what they're doing right now to preserve power with the Opportunity Rover. So, yeah, no more updates since then. So right now they're just waiting it out and seeing. Uh, I guess every one of the possible radar dishes they can point towards it and uh, listen for any activity or listening to see when it will possibly call home, uh, even if it does totally have memory problems and stuff like that and recycle the, the uh, time clock uh, into a different date. They said that it still is going to, when the sun's out, call home occasionally, so they may be able to uh, get it back in operation again, hopefully. And next, this one is from my friend Bob Asian from Gizmodo. Hey, artists, stop putting shiny crap into space. Uh, I'll just read the first part of the article here. As if there isn't already enough junk in space, an artist 
planning to launch a reflective inflatable sculpture to low earth orbit in October. The art piece is meant to instill a sense of wonder and alter humanity's impression of itself. Yeah, right. <laughs> but in reality, it's an empty gesture that only serves to infuriate astronomers. It's called the Orbital Reflector, and it's the brainchild of U.S. artist Trevor Paglin. Once it's unfurled and fully erect, the space-based sculpture will be visible in the night sky, appearing as a fast-moving bright star. Paglin's installation will stay in low orbit for a minimum of 60 days, though it could be longer, after which time it will mercifully re-enter the atmosphere and burn up to a crisp. And this was not the first time this was happening to um, artist uh, Peter Beck uh, placed a three-foot wide mirrored ball called Humanity Star into orbit, um, attracting the ire of scientists. That was uh, back in January he did that too. I don't know if it fell out of orbit or not, but yeah, um, the, art, the uh, scientists are calling it sending twinkly useless objects into orbit. And uh, they're saying, yeah, it's getting trendy now. I don't like the idea much either because, you know, it would be kind of like putting billboard advertisements up in outer space too. I did a a report about that too that um, I think a Japanese company or some company had developed a way to actually beam laser beams up into the sky and light up certain particles in the upper part of the atmosphere and draw letters and words and pictures on it and I was asking people do you really want advertisements up in the sky and no I think the nice sky should be left as you know if you're left as um, unobscured as possible now I realize there are useful satellites up there and you can see them along with uh, Skylab too if you want to see that like the International Space Station not Skylab the International Space Station Skylab was an earlier one but if you want to see the International Space Station that's a bright object going across the sky too you can see that uh, every so often but I would like it to be useful objects too and what's going to happen the first time some artist uh, unfurls a big giant shiny object up there and ends up crashing into a communication satellite or knocking down a cable TV satellite or something like that. You know, that's, uh, you know, if people keep doing it and putting more and more space junk up there, it's bound to happen. So give me your opinion. What do you think about putting space art up in uh, outer space just for the purpose of art? Not any useful communication, no uh, science exploration or anything, just to, uh, so people can ponder the uniqueness of, uh, the, uh, of outer space or, or whatever the artist wants to uh, what do you say? Alter humanity's impression of itself. I, I don't think if I saw that little spot up in the sky, I'm going to alter humanity's impression of itself. But give me your, as usual, give me your opinion on the comments below. Now, this is the last TDD report for August. Um, next month, I uh, typically I do the second and the fourth uh, Saturdays of the month. But next month, I will be at the Buckeye Boys place, and along with my friend Muzzle Mike, who does the ITL report. So possibly next month. I may schedule the TDD report for the first Saturday instead of the second Saturday. I'll see how it works out with schedule and, and what happens. So they may be a little bit um, different in their order for the next month in September, but we'll just see how it works out. But I will definitely do two TDD reports in September. So anyway, take care, everybody. I will catch you later.